Hey, what's up guys? Hey, let's get this LR3 in here and see if we can diagnose the air suspension. test the air suspension the truck has to be running if you want to check the power at the compressor the truck does have to be running the key on it doesn't run so make sure to always start the car if you want to test for power at the compressor and that's what you got to do so or I started the car let's jack it up and we'll check for power at the plug cool. all right so can you look down here no nope. shit is slower than hell okay let's try it again <laughs> I might have to get my camera out <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> I think, do something. Sure. This shit ain't working, homie. Uh, he says, it's working, homie. Okay. You still got me? Alright. So, the compressor will only run when the heat cuts on, when the car's running. I got a test light on the power wire for the compressor. It's only going to stay lit for a few seconds. As soon as it throws a fault code, it cuts power off the compressor. So we know we have power at the compressor, so let's throw a new compressor on it and go from there. Okay. Now you got me? I got you. All right. Can you look good? Good as you can look. Can you feel good? See, when I do this, it follows you, but the car is no longer in the shot. Yeah, they user friendly. Okay, so we're still unplugging. Now we got two lines in the rear, Dave. Two lines in the rear. This thing smells burnt. Well, I woke up to go get me a cold pop, and then I thought somebody was barbecuing. I said, oh Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Hope this didn't, compressor didn't overheat and melt this line. I'm gonna be putting a line on it too. No, it's coming. Just don't want to come out. All right, so this line did melt. I'm guessing the compressor kept running, got super hot, didn't cut off, and just melted the line. Now what we're going to do is take and cut this off. We'll try to reuse the has a brass insert. We're going to try to reuse it as long as we don't stick it in too far. We should be okay. If we do have a problem, then we'll replace the line. But we're gonna try to get by without replacing the line for now. All right, so I cut just enough off the line, got rid of all the bad stuff. Did put one bolt in the compressor to hold it on. We're gonna get it started and use a pair of pliers, and kind of persuade it back in. Okay guys, this is what that piece looks like. All the lines, this is the line we were dealing with. And um, got messed up. Basically, this is just the exhaust silencer for the EAS compressor. So instead of replacing this whole piece, we just trimmed part of the bad stuff off and reinstalled it back in the compressor. So we'll give that a try. If not, then we'll replace it. All right, let's give her a try. See what she does. sound too healthy but she is trying to run 
that's about normal. We do still have the cover off, so it'll be a little louder than normal. But, no fault codes yet. We'll see if it'll air up. And there we go. Everything seems to be working. Compressor has run. It has cut off. It's running again. We're going to check those lines that we plugged in, make sure they're not leaking. Uh, you can hear that it just cut off now. Uh, no fault codes. We're in off-road mode. Dynamic stability is working. Uh, instrument cluster. No fault codes. So, just a faulty compressor. And we got her fixed. All right, guys, we got the air suspension fixed. Um, we got no fault codes in the air suspension. Everything works great. I did put a used old style compressor on it, not a new AMK. Didn't have to program anything. So we should be good there. I did leak test it. Everything turned out okay. So air suspension's fixed. However, it did not fix our Prundle light. Uh, I've got the center console tore apart. I'll bring you in here and let's see what happened. Uh, we got a lot of corrosion. We're gonna pull the center console, finish pulling that out. We'll get the shifter assembly out and I'll show you what happened. Um, we may have to get a, a used shifter assembly. And it's gonna be a lot of cleaning on the terminals in here that they go to the shifter. So let's look in here and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, guys. Here's the connector for the shifter assembly. This thing is a mother to get unplugged and plugged back in. Just like this. This top part, piece of cake to get off, snaps in. Here's an, a used one. It's got clips on it. Uh, you got two plugs. One, the uh, all-terrain control module and your Prindle light. That's it. Um, here's the two plugs. But the shifter plug is there and this is the latch on it the way this works is it's going to be latched like so in the car you're going to have to press this in and pull this down while pulling out on the connector itself it's a pain to do but if the camera will focus you can see the corrosion on this terminal we're gonna have to go in I have a terminal tool basically it's like a file we'll go in and spray some uh, cleaner on it this is the cleaner that I use this is a harsh cleaner but it does a really good job careful not to get any on the uh, seats or anything so what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and finish removing this center console and gain access. There's four 10 millimeters, one clip for the cable, and um, I'll show you a little work around on the uh, shifter assembly. It snaps in. Let's get this thing tore apart and see if we can fix some of this corrosion. We got the shifter out and we found our problem. The shifter connector was full of corrosion. I kind of showed you that terminal. Well, it gets better. Um, the pin at the shifter assembly is corroded and it's gone. There's nothing there, so we will need a new shifter assembly. Hopefully we can take the connector apart, dig out what's left of the pin, because I'm sure it's still in the connector. I'll show you that now. now I want to show you how to disconnect the shifter linkage from the shifter assembly itself then we'll get into why we're gonna have to replace it uh, if you look in the shifter assembly it's linkage with a little ball on the end of it and the cable assembly kind of works like your uh, lift struts for your hood and tailgate it just clips in you can take a little pick I took a pick like this one and just picked it off um, 
you can use a like a small pry bar but it's got to be able to fit in here and you have to be able to push it over then one clip clips here do not lose it looks like this so there we go guys here is the culprit this is why we're gonna have to replace it but we're one step forward of getting this thing fixed uh, but I'm gonna have to pick us up a used shifter assembly and the camera can focus there we go you can see that we're missing a pin right there completely gone so this shifter assembly is no good that just means what's left of the pin is still in this connector we're gonna have to get that out all right we've got it disassembled uh, we took the connector apart pulled this one pin out camera will focus I'll show you you can see that the the pin is still in there we're gonna have to get that out it may take us a little bit but we can get it Okay, I got the connector all cleaned up. Get over there. Stay. Got the connector all cleaned up, put back together. Got our used shifter assembly plugged up. I don't have the shifter hooked up. Went ahead and plugged in the lights for the Prindle. Moment of truth. Let's see what happens. Ready? Boom. Prindle light works. So, let's get all this put back together and see what happens. On this piece here for the shifter, we're going to slide that through the shifter assembly. And we're just going to take our pry bar and just push it right back on that little ball. Um, four tens. Put a clip back on our shifter cable. Uh, and the rest of it just snaps together and plugs back in so you know a 15 minute job You know they say that you know, some things on camera makes it look bigger. You have big thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> like new. Just the side's still attached well, so it's just not new. It's like new, but just not new. Yeah. So what kind of glue did we use? It's a uh, high temperature fabric glue. Dave got our A-pillars glued back. Let's go ahead and put those A-pillars back in. Uh, it's a T30, uh, Torx bit. So let's go ahead and put these A-pillars in and we'll be done for today. All right guys, let's cut us on some jams. 
Gotta have some jams while I work on this car. Thanks for tuning in on this episode. We got a lot done on the LR3. If you like what you see, hit that like button, subscribe. Uh, don't forget about our Snap On Beach Style, man. We're at 80 subscribers right now. We're 20 away from doing a drawing for this Beach Style. If you hadn't seen that video, go check that video out. I'll link it down below. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate all you guys' help, and we'll check you next time.